Raised in Canada to Russian parents, Vitalik Buterin is the blockchain movement's biggest celebrity. He created the Ethereum blockchain when he was just 21 years old. And its cryptocurrency, the Ether, is second only to Bitcoin. Its market cap increased by over 10,000% in 2017. Vitalik has been on a global campaign to raise awareness of his creation and its potential implications for business, finance, and government. We caught up with him in Russia, where the government hopes that Ethereum can be as transformative for their own finances as it's been for his. So I heard about Bitcoin for the first time in maybe February 2011. Eventually, I found a guy who was willing to pay me five Bitcoins per article for writing articles for his Bitcoin blog. And what was Bitcoin worth at the time? Each Bitcoin was $0.8. $0.8, so you're doing five per article, and now that would be $5,000 an article. Right. More or less. Okay. Mm -hmm. Being a, a high school guy with not much money, I thought $1.5 an hour was a fairly reasonable wage. So I, yeah. <laughs> that was a good deal to you. Yeah, $1. totally. $5 an hour. <laughs> yeah, fight for $1.5. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, earned 20 Bitcoins, then I spent eight and a half of them on a t-shirt, and I figure, oh, cool, this all actually works. And what really struck out at me was this idea that it actually is still possible for people to come together and create an entire new financial system. And this like seemed uh, you know, kind of very empowering to me. Hearing you talk about recreating a financial system, there's something sort of utopian about it, isn't mm. there? Get rid of all the old stuff and create something totally from scratch. You know, it wasn't about kind of like overthrowing anything. It was more just to the idea that before kind of Finance and lots of other things seemed like there were all these people way up way up there that were just doing these things and without them You know, there's no way any of this could happen and here It just made it very obvious that money is just something that a community can make for itself whenever it wants We know what decentralized networks are. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of BitTorrent and um, all the various uh, file sharing networks, like all the various decentralized messaging systems. There was this group of cypherpunks that thought, okay, you can do all of those things in a decentralized way, but why can't we do decentralized cash? For example, if I have, uh, you know, some song and I want to send you the song over a decentralized network, I do this and yeah. that's fine. I have the song, you have the song. Money is fundamentally different because money requires some notion of memory. So I have a hundred digital dollars. I send you the hundred digital dollars. Then I make another transaction, which looks exactly like the, that first transaction, except the only difference is it sends someone else 100 digital dollars. I published both transactions at the same time. Clearly, both of those transactions cannot succeed. You have to have some mechanism that keeps track of the fact that I sent you these $100, and so that after I send the first transaction, I, and the system knows that I no longer have the money, and so the second transaction fails. Explain to me why this technology is so transformational that people think it'll change the world. Mm -hmm because they represent kind of epochal changes in the, the options that we have for interacting with each other. With uh, Bitcoin, it's uh, you don't need banks to send money anymore. It's just something that happens directly peer to peer. And Ethereum extends that to m making digitally enforceable agreements. But that changes whole industries, doesn't it? And it hasn't yet, but we'll see. Do you feel like the destroyer of worlds here? I mean, you can essentially eliminate how many jobs by doing that. Make, Destroyer I mean, of jobs, creator of better ones. Because <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs>